Hello friends, this is C. Anup Bhatia here and today I am going to discuss with you the topic title Are you liable for tax audit? A very important topic from point of view of determining that whether your business, your profession requires a tax audit or not. Through this video, you will be able to come to know that what are the various nitty gritties of a tax audit which may be relevant for you in getting your books audited under the provisions of income tax law. Now my first and foremost question before you is, what is a tax audit? The purpose of a tax audit is twofold. Number one, the tax audit ensures from the government's point of view that the assessee is maintaining proper set of books of accounts and document. Number two, there is a format called Form 3CD and through this particular form, the government is looking at various compliance aspects which an auditor has to verify on the assessee that the assessee has done so and so compliance or not. Say I can exemplify it in the manner. Say the government wants that as per section 40A3, if you are incurring any expenditure, such expenditure above rupees 10,000 should not be incurred in cash. Now here the auditor will verify whether you are incurring expenditure in cash above 10,000. If yes, then he has to report the same. You are also subject to the tedious compliance, the auditor will verify that whether you are a tedious compliant person or not. Likewise, it could be in relation to loans, deposit specified sums which you are accepting and which you are reaping, whether there is a compliance from the point of view of income tax law or not. This is also required to be verified in a tax audit. So there are number of items, particularly speaking, around about 44 clauses which are mentioned in a tax audit report which are required to be certified, which are required to be reported by a tax auditor in his report. So the tax audit perspective is a checking by an auditor on behalf of the government authority that is on behalf of income tax department of the books of an assessee and to check and verify that whether the assessee is compliant of those topics, those points or not. Now I am putting before you that when the tax audit is compulsory and in other words I can say the tax audit is compulsory for whom? It could be an assessee like a company, it could be a partnership firm, it could be an LLP, it could be a proprietorship firm or it could be an AOP or BOI. The point is not that who the assessee you are, are you a company, partnership firm, LLP etc. The main point to determine that whether you are liable for tax audit is to see what is the level of your total sales, what is the level of your gross receipts or your turnover that I am going to discuss further. If you breach that particular limit which is prescribed in the law, then you are compulsorily required for tax audit, otherwise you are not. So therefore, now I put up the question before you, what is the threshold limit for turnover, gross receipts or total sales? See, the category could be a businessman or the category could be a professional. I would like to mention here that it is only if you are a businessman or a professional you are covered into the tax audit aspect and that too if you are a businessman then the law will see that whether your gross receipt level is exceeding or your total turnover or total sale is exceeding rupees 1 crore or not and if you are a professional like a doctor or an accountant or a lawyer then your limit will be greater than 50 lakh. Now, the point which comes here for our understanding is that why I have further written here this turnover level of rupees 2 crore even. See, I would like to highlight here one point that certain assessees are also offering their income as per the provisions of section 44 AD of Income Tax Act 1961. And there, if your turnover is up to rupees 2 crore, then no tax audit applicability would arise. So in simple words, I can put out that the normal tax audit limit is if your turnover gross receipt total sale exceed rupees 1 crore you are liable for tax audit but if you are offering your income under section 44 ad of income tax act 1961 then in that scenario up to rupees 2 crore turnover also the tax audit will not apply however in a professional's case if his particular gross receipt level exceed rupees 50 lakh in such a scenario the tax audit will apply Otherwise, tax audit will not apply. But I could mention one additional point here that likewise, say for example, there is a doctor who is my client and he says, Mr. Bhatia, I had gross receipt of rupees 48 lakh in the preceding financial year. And 
Out of that 48 lakh rupees, I could have saved only rupees 10 lakh because I had various expenditure to run my clinic and all. So if your theory of less than 50 lakh is applied, then section 44 ADA of Income Tax Act will operate and that will say out of 48 lakh rupees, I have to offer at least 24 lakh rupees. But my actual income is just rupees 10 lakh. In such a scenario, I would suggest that person to maintain his books of account document and to get them audited. In such a scenario, he may offer even lower than 50%. So what I am trying to put up before you that there are two threshold limits which are basically working greater than 1 crore and greater than 50 lakh. You have to check are you a businessman or you are a professional. Accordingly, that will apply. When you are offering lower margin than 44 AD or you are offering lower margin than section 44 ADA of Income Tax Act, then also I can suggest that you are prima facie liable for getting your books of account document audited. Now I put up what is income tax audit procedure? What is the tax audit procedure? So first of all, you have to determine are you liable for tax audit? As I have discussed with you earlier, you have to see your turnover level and you have to decide are you liable for tax audit. If yes, you have to appoint a tax auditor which is a practicing charter accountant. Then you have to provide the required or requisite information to the tax auditor. He will give you a complete list of documents which he is wanting from the point of view of tax audit compliance. And once let's assume your tax audit gets completed, then you have to accept the tax audit report which will be uploaded by the tax auditor through his income tax login on your particular income tax login. In your income tax login, you can see that there is a tax audit report which is uploaded. You can check it, you can accept it, you can refuse it. But your process gets completed once you accept the tax auditor's report. So this is a brief tax audit procedure. However, it is otherwise a detailed procedure which goes on. The tax auditor has to look into number of things and wherein the client has to cooperate for the purposes of getting a smooth tax audit procedure completed on him. Now I come to a million dollar question. What are the consequences of not obtaining tax audit report? Many a clients may ask that, uh, say Mr. Bhatia, if I don't get my books of account document audited, then what are the consequences? Then my answer to them is very standard. As per section 271B of Income Tax Act 1961, a penalty equivalent to half percent of total sale turnover gross receipt or 1.5 lakh rupees, whichever is less, that can be levied for not obtaining your books tax audited. So this is a serious and severe penalty which one can face if he doesn't get his books of account document audited. Now as I usually do in my all videos herein I am discussing some other important queries with you. The first query is whether tax audit is compulsory. My answer to is it is very straight. If your turnover gross receipt are exceeding the prescribed limit of 1 crore 50 lakh as is applicable on you, it is compulsory to get your books tax audited. If you will not, then I have already discussed section 271B penalty will follow. When FNO transactions are subject to tax audit compliance, second but very important question sir, and many a persons are dealing into FNO transactions are confused that whether the FNO transactions require a tax audit or not. I would straight away say in FNO transactions, sir, the turnover is computed in an absolute manner. What does that mean? It means, say by an example, I would put in a FNO transaction, I earn 10,000 rupees. In another FNO transaction, I lost 20,000 rupees. Whatever may be the value of that particular lot, it could be in lakhs of rupees. But what is significant for determining the turnover is in one transaction I earn 10,000, in another transaction I lost 20,000, my turnover is 30,000. If this way I am going up and my total turnover calculation therefore in absolute term goes beyond 1 crore, I am liable for tax audit, otherwise I am not. Third question, is it compulsory to get tax audit done once you are subjected to tax audit? What do I mean through this particular question? Let's assume in assessment year 1718, I have been already subjected to tax audit. Whether in 1819, I have to again go into tax audit compliance? The answer is each and every year, each and every assessment year is separate. For every year, you will see whether the turnover is crossing the limits, gross receipt is crossing the limit or not. If yes, the answer is tax audit required, otherwise not. Fourth question, very important. Whether GST is added in computing tax audit turnover limit or not? 
Now, because a question like this would arise may before a question, may before a situation that 98 lakh rupees turnover in the hands of a person without GST. If I further add up 4 lakh rupees GST collected by him, his total turnover might be at 102 lakh rupees, which means an audit is required. But most of the persons, most of the assessees are following exclusive system of accounting wherein they separately book their GST. That is, he person, the person would be booking 4 lakh rupees separately and 98 lakh rupees under sale. In such a case, his turnover would not be assumed to be exceeding 1 crore and hence the tax audit consequences would not follow. Now, what is the last date for obtaining a tax audit report? My last query. The last date for obtaining a tax audit report by default is 30th September. Every year it is 30th September. The government may however extend it in special circumstances, but by default the thumb rule is that the tax audit report needed to be uploaded by 30th of September by the auditor and within that time limit it should be accepted by the assessee even. And at last sir, I thank you for listening to me, for promoting me, promoting my channel, giving me feedbacks. You can also share with me your ideas on taxation wherein you face certain problems, you want certain clarity. I would try my level best to share my views and in a simplified manner, I would try that I can bring some clarity in taxation aspects for your understanding. Thank you. Thank you very much.